All right guys, so we're gonna be comparing if you should get like an interchangeable lens camera, like a tiny one like this Sony Nex 5 right here, or if you should get a Sony RX100 Mark III. Yes. How many of them are there? Um, there are seven, and now they have the Sony ZV-1, okay. which is the replacement for Yeah, there's camera. a lot of them, but yeah. as you can see, just from the form factor alone, they're gonna be around the same size if you get one of these smaller APC ones. But once you get a lens on there, then the size difference kind of doesn't work out <laughs> yeah. yeah, Once you get a lens on here, there's a little with. bit, you know, size difference. But today we're gonna compare them and see if there's that much big difference between these two cameras. Because right here we got a one inch sensor and the one inch sensor, you know, that's a perfectly normal average size for a sensor. But right here we got an APC sensor, which is gonna be a lot bigger than what we have on here. But when we put professional level lenses on this camera, is there gonna be a big difference between this camera? So let's find out. So right here on the RX100 Mark III, right? How much yeah. did you get that camera for? I got this for $250 um, on a bit of a discount because it wasn't in top condition. Normally okay. used, they go for like 300 to 400. And where'd you get it from? I got this from mpb.com. Um, you mean Amazon? Yeah, Where Amazon. I can get influence yeah. Yeah. and I can get money for <laughs> Amazon. it. Amazon. Okay. Yeah, you should get it from Amazon. Make sure to use my link below to get yourself one of these cameras or yeah. lenses. But yeah, so you got that for 250. And right here we got the next five, which is also, I mean, I got it for $116 right here but depending on the model you get because there's so many different like sony yeah. apc cameras out there you're going to be spending at least a couple of hundred dollars on it now with this camera since this one already comes with a lens which kind of lens is it um so this is a zeiss lens it's a 24 to 70 millimeter um with a variable aperture of 1.8 to 2.8 on the far end um pretty sharp it's good enough lens yeah well, Zeiss lenses are a scam. I do not believe in them. I think Zeiss <laughs> is a fraudulent company. I don't like that. Fuck Zeiss. They make good lenses. One thing I will say, the Zeiss Sony yeah. lenses look really cool. They do, yeah. Like, they're beautifully they like designed they lenses. Are. But they're just so overpriced. They are. I agree. Like, it was like $2,000 for like an F4, like, like 28 millimeter yeah. or some bullshit. Like, it's ridiculous. So, right here, we have a Tamron lens, which... Tamron is one of my favorite companies just because of you get really good high quality glass with it so the image quality you're going to get out of the lenses are going to be great but it's it's it just comes in like a cheaper like case and like as you can see like this one's like really beat up but but still it's very affordable you can get this lens used i want to say for around like and this is a 28 to 75 millimeter 2.8 that's what, what was it 24 to 70 24 to 70 yeah. it's a 1.8 to 2.8 which it's kind of true, like it's technically is, yeah. but like on a one inch one sensor, sensor yeah. it's gonna be like a more close to like an F4. Now on an APC sensor, this is gonna be a 20 to 75, so it's gonna be like, what is it, like, like 32 to 100 yeah. F4 kind of lens. So, you know, I mean, it's good, but we're gonna be doing comparison and this lens, if you wanna get it for, it's gonna be like five, six hundred dollars. So. This might be a setup closer to like a thousand, while this might be like two, three hundred dollars. So depending on what you want to do, it's gonna be you know very and different. And your budget, you know, like yeah, because this one will fit in your pocket, and yeah. this is. I mean, you could like fit in like two pockets separately, kind of. It's still a good travel yeah, size. It, like... It's still a good travel size, like what she said. So we're gonna do some tests right now. We're gonna we're gonna take a picture of this coffee cup, okay? This is a very special design coffee cup just for this review. Shouts out to French Workshop. It's a French bakery that's not really a French bakery from what I heard, but I can't reveal my sources. So let's take some pictures let's of it. Let's take some pictures. And see how it looks. So right here, if you look at the camera, there's a flash button, right? So when you press that flash button, what happens? Oh, you're running into, all right. It opens, so I, I don't know what the fuck this menu is. <laughs> I, don't, I never used it. I don't know what it is. I work with flashes all the time. I don't know what it does. I never menu. use it. But why is it on the face menu right here? Yeah. Just put it in the menu, hide it somewhere. And this, you know what's the greatest thing? Yeah. This camera doesn't have a flash. Yeah, yeah. So they used up what the menu was for a flash button. That it doesn't have. Like this one has it, but there's a flash button on the top, which makes sense. So why would you put this right here? 
I don't know. Cut. So, right here, what are you shooting at? Do I get closer? Go at, at 70. Okay. 72.8, and I'll take the same picture like where you are. And do you want to take it from this angle as well? There's a wild camera woman in front of me, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. It's like I have to change the ISO on here. I have to go to the. Uh, the I have to go to. Menu? The, there's no function menu. Oh. This is the first okay. near the Sony camera that they didn't think <laughs> right, about. Right, right. I'm just gonna do fucking aperture priority. Fuck it. All right. So now we're gonna compare the different pictures and let's see how the image quality looks compared to this. And also the bokeh you're gonna get from them is gonna be very different. So when we compare both of these pictures, they actually look pretty similar to me. And if we look at the one on the left, that's going to be the RX100. And on the right, we got the Next 5. And you can see that Next 5 definitely has more background blur and separation in the image. So that does make it look nicer. But when we do a close-up, since the RX100 has a 20 megapixel sensor on it, and the Next 5 has a 40 megapixel sensor, you can see that there is a decent amount of difference when it comes to the sharpness of the image. Now both these shots were shot at the base ISO. So when you shoot at the base ISO with these smaller sensor cameras, you do get a really nice looking clean image. But the smaller the sensor is, the higher you go on the ISO, that's when you start having problems when it comes to the noise and the image quality. The really cool thing that this camera has, that this, this camera has, that this one doesn't have, is that it has a pop-up EVF on it right here, which is really cool. Now do all of the RX100 models have this? They do. Um... Actually, the first RX100 and the Mark II might not have it, but starting with this line, they started including the uh, pop-up uh, yeah. electronic viewfinder. And that's very important, especially if you're just doing like, if you're just walking around taking pictures on like a sunny day, like it's almost impossible to see out of these like horrible screens that Sony puts on these cameras. Even if you buy like an A1 or something yeah. like these $6,000 cameras, yeah. they cheap out of the, on the, the screens. I don't know why, you know. It's like you're Not charging six thousand dollars. Yeah, put an iPhone screen on there or something. Yeah. Like spend like a couple of extra hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. But this one has a pop-up EVF. Now with this next one, I believe you can get a attachment on here. So you yeah. could technically get one on here, but that's something you have to carry extra. And this one's uh, really cool because it just goes in there, so it makes it a lot easier to be make it pocketable. Now if you get one of the A5, was A6000 cameras. Those do have EVFs on them, so if you want to spend a little bit more money, then you can get something like that that has an EVF on there, which I would recommend, honestly, so that is something to think about. Right now, we have swapped cameras. I got the RX100 Mark III. Sony's great at naming these cameras. And on this camera, since we have a 24 to 70 millimeter, you can take some landscape shots, some nice looking shots right here. And even though it's a tiny sensor, since we do have a 1.8 aperture on here, we can actually get some you know, nice looking blur, background blur on this camera also. If you get close to your subject, especially you can get some really nice looking blur. So, I don't know, this camera is actually really nice. How are you feeling about the next Jack, five? Your camera just malfunctioned. What, <laughs> what do you mean? Whoa, what the <laughs> fuck should you yeah, do? I just pressed, um, what is it called? Shoot, uh, menu to- What? To change you click the menu <laughs> button, the, menu button. Yeah, the screen is just completely <laughs> <laughs> damn i'm just gonna take the battery off Let's see you know with my cold with my um sony a7 like the original yeah. that would also freeze a lot where you trying to do your shooting I was menu just, uh going into the shooting menu sad time i think it's the iso is fucked up though let's see what the iso is at yeah, it's at 12,800 for some reason. Here. Here. You can change the ISO, but it's like you have to go to the menu, brightness, color, <laughs> and oh the ISO. Oh my god. Yeah, this I, is like this ancient Sony menu. This is the kind of menu I had on my camera growing up. Yeah, but at least, at least you have a flash button <laughs> on the camera that doesn't have a flash on it. <laughs> yeah, you could, yeah, I said it's like 800 okay, or something. Cool. So you can take some pictures with it. But think about this set, you're limited to the 24 to 70 millimeter, which might be fine if that's all you want. But the cool thing about this camera is that you can change to, you know, you, since it has a Sony E-mount on there, you have like literally hundreds of options of lenses that you can use on there. Like right now we have a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, but we can swap it over to 7200 or we can go even like a 600 millimeter lens and do wildlife with it. So, I don't know. 
but it is cool how small this camera is like especially like once you like turn it off this lens goes in there and then you could just you know put it in your pockets you can't do it with that camera can't do it with this camera wait how what? do you mount a flash on this you have to like take this oh my god thing off on here I don't know. it's the older sony system interesting but the question you do have to ask yourself camera woman the question you do have to ask yourself with a camera like this is that would you rather use this or would you rather use your iphone yeah you know because if you're just shooting like wide shots the iphone can do it too like i don't know that's the problem with like this type of cameras i guess is that like the iPhone kind of covers yeah. a lot and of the stuff Yeah, and bearing in mind, it. like, the age of this camera, like, iPhone technology now, the sensor is good enough that you can get really decent pictures out yeah. of an iPhone camera oh, yeah. at this Especially point. with, like, the... What is it called? Like, how the computer of it, like, handles the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, like, a lot of iPhones now shoot DNG, which is DNG RAW. Yeah. So if you're looking to shoot RAW, you can still do it with your iPhone camera. Exactly. It kind of makes these cameras redundant. Part of the reason that I even got this camera was just because I didn't want to waste battery on my iPhone. Exactly. So, especially in low too. lights. Yeah, especially iPhone in low has light, the yeah. long exposure feature, which these cameras should have. Um, which is, like, it's using image averaging where it takes, like, a bunch of pictures and then it combines them to reduce the noise in it. That's what your iPhone does like automatically. Yeah. If you want to do it with these cameras, you got to take a bunch of pictures, yes. bring it into Photoshop and then combine, combine them. There, yep. You're not going to do that. You know? No. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind so, of makes it seem like, you know, it's like, it's kind of like a thing of like, you are either like a zero or like a hundred. It's like, if you're not that sure, your iPhone's probably yeah. fine. But if you're like, I want to be professional, then you might want to go for something like this. Yes. But now let's test out the video quality out of these two cameras because I'm just curious. Right, yeah. So, and like, like right now we're shooting with the Canon R5 right now. So, I guess I'll compare to what this is. I know the image quality out of this camera's video is terrible. If you get the newer Sony cameras, obviously they have great video image quality, but the older ones don't really have it. So, let's see how that looks. Okay, go. I don't remember if this camera has image stabilization or not. Yeah, it definitely does because it does that jerky yeah. shit. <laughs> so this was after image stabilization was invented. Before image stabilization. <laughs> At the bottom, we got the Canon R5. We got the Sony Next 5 on the left and then the Sony RX100 Mark III on the right. And so at the end, which one would you rather have? So for my purposes, the RX100 Mark III works great as a travel camera, but if you're looking to- Like you do mostly like travel. Travel, or like, and streets. it's lightweight, and I don't want to use my phone while I'm, you know, on vacation in case of emergencies. But if you're looking for a more professional camera or something that will get you there, then starting off on the NEX camera would probably be a better choice. My yeah. choice though is the M3. I, I, I'm going to have to agree. and. Because with the NEX cameras, like, you don't have to go super expensive. Like, the Tamron lens is, like, $600. But you can get yourself, like, a Sony 50mm 1.8 lens for, like, let's say, like, 100 bucks yeah. used or something. Yep. So, at the end, you'll be spending around the same money. And you'll have a lens that you can use with your professional yep. lenses, professional cameras later on. And then, over time, you can just build up and buy more lenses to add into your collection. So, it depends on what you want. But you also want to capture, keep thinking in mind if you could just use your phone instead. But it's going to be up to you. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like it. I make videos every single day. Just check my channel. There's a every video, single day. Every single day. There's like three, four, five videos. So make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Bye.